This is Twit. Hey, everybody, back. we're back. <laughs> Finally, uh, yeah, we were in Puerto Rico, for those of you who don't know, for three weeks. Um, we were deployed down there, um, myself, along with 22 other hams, including Andy. Anderson, uh, Kilo Echo Zero, Alpha Yankee, Juliet. Say hello. Andy. Hello, everybody. Don, I can't believe you'd wear that and not a moo moo, but that's all right. <laughs> <laughs> well, I have standards, Andrew. Hey, we're also joined with uh, Joe Bassett, uh, Whiskey One, Whiskey Charlie November. Are you on the air? There's Joe. Hey Joe guys, sort of ran the, uh, the whole uh, operations over at the uh, uh, Red Cross area. I was kind of over at the EOC. Hey, Joe, tell us a little bit about what you did when you were uh, in Puerto Rico, and welcome back, by the way. Uh, hey, nice to be hanging out with the cool kids tonight. <laughs> um, well, the one thing I didn't do was I didn't sleep, um, but I did spend most of my time, I had gone down to talk on radios and actually spent most of my time working on logistics, making sure people were where they could do the most good. Uh, I had uh, originally signed up to go into the woods and talk on radio. Got very little radio time in, um, but it, it was a blast getting to help the people of Puerto Rico, uh, particularly moving traffic, making sure that requests got to the Red Cross the way they needed to, and also over to you guys at the EOC. Well, I know you had your hands full because um, it was very busy over there and it was so crowded. Um, and uh, how many people do you have running that? I know at some point, I mean, you guys were running net control 24 hours a day. Yeah, uh, well, when Andy uh, got out to the uh, Guajataka Dam, uh, we really needed to go to 24 seven because we never knew when there might be a request coming in. Uh, so spent uh, several nights uh, with uh, some of the other guys uh, sleeping on the radio room floor so that we could answer the call uh, as soon as needed. So yeah, it was 24 seven, I guess for uh, seven or eight days. Uh, before things settled down enough for us to take a bit of a break. Um, this is where our, our uh, ham shack at the EOC and in red is where we activated all of the hams. There's, there are actually call signs, you can't read that. And then you'll see some pink uh, on the other slide, you'll see some pink ones and that was the local hams, the, the, the previous slide. And um, the, the, go back to the other slide, yeah. There, you'll see some light pink ones in this picture too. That's our local hams, uh, a lot of local hams. And I really wanna give a big shout out to those local hams. From day two, after this hurricane struck, from day two, these guys who were impacted, who live on the island, were working their butts off on the local repeaters, helping to bring up the power grids because you know you have to balance the loads and nobody had it. There was no communications anywhere. And so they helped the power company start to bring that power back up and uh, they were instrumental and they were amazing. So they I just were. want to be, give a big shout out to them. All right, you can go on the next slide. Next slide is a FEMA map and um, it, everybody had to kind of put their little stickers on there. The, the hams are yellow. So we got, we got the yellow was our color. And so we put our stickers wherever we had communications. And uh, if you can see, we blew the, everybody, the competition out of the water. We had more communication than anybody. <laughs> and there were Secret Service, uh, the National Guard, uh, what do we got? Um, all of FEMA, uh, we got- uh, the, the FCC. FCC was there. <laughs> I mean, anybody who's anybody was in that room. Uh, VA, uh, MERS, I, I can't even think of a, I mean, it was this huge room just filled with the players. And you can look on this map and we were the ones with the most communication on that island. So, um, and there's a look at, uh, the next one's a look at Gary up uh, installing the tent, one of the antennas up on the top of the convention center. And that's kind of where Gary and I worked out of. I know Joe and the net control station were mostly out of the Red Cross headquarters, which was very crowded. You could fit two, maybe three people in that radio room. And then there was no room anywhere else. So if you weren't deployed, you kind of had, <laughs> you had to bad. sit on the floor a lot of times and everything. So um, I, w I worked a lot, mostly out of the EOC, like here. Um, this guy in the foreground is a FEMA guy, MERS guy, and uh, there's some of those Mars. That's, uh, Bob. And yeah, Bob Speakman and uh, Gary, Whiskey, or Kilo Charlie 5 uh, Whiskey. CQN. <laughs> CQN. Yeah, yeah. And that's uh, and, uh, Army, Oscar. Army Mars people back there in the background. Yeah, the Mars guys. So 
Um, you can keep going. And there's Gary again, Kilo Charlie 5, Quebec, Charlie November, that's it. And I don't know why I drew a blank on that. And that's where we worked out of the convention center. Um, it's one of the only places with power and uh, air, conditioning. air conditioning, which was ice cold. Um, I mean, and, and I want to kind of focus on this if you, I don't know how large you can make that, but um, it, this is what I had to do on a daily basis. Uh, we had kind of had to put together this, give it to the Red Cross, give it to the FEMA guys, everything that we're up to that day or what's going on. Um, and there's just a day in the life. Um, and it's kind of interesting to read. I have, I have one for each day we're there. I mean, if you guys can read that, that's some pretty cool stuff going on. Um, oh, wow. Yeah, there you go. Um, the, you know, we were just doing a lot of stuff. We were trying to get a lot of stuff done behind the scenes. Like originally Red Cross wanted us to do, uh, enter stuff into the WinLink, uh, use WinLink to enter stuff into their safe and well database, go out on these reunifications. And Joe, why don't you kind of tell people what reunifications are? Uh, well, reunification, just the, the short of it is that Red Cross teams would go out and they'd be able to reunify family members with other family members, uh, whether they're throughout Puerto Rico or up in the States. And you're right, that was our original tasking. Uh, but very soon after arriving in Puerto Rico, we realized that there was a much more eminent need in tactical communications. And I think that's one of the stories that uh, shows amateur radio in its finest hour uh, there in Puerto Rico, that uh, we really didn't have the equipment for those tactical communications uh, in what would have been two meter radios. But the operators that went with us were very flexible in going ahead and setting up uh, their 40 meter dipoles for NVIS. And that's how we're able to uh, get island wide communications so quickly. And then we were able to get tactical communications. We had safe havens for all of our operators in uh, fire uh, stations or at hospitals, and they would be able to get resource requests in very quickly, whether to the Red Cross or the EOC using NVIS. Um, I'd also like to go back just a second. You're talking about the local amateur radio operators. When I was first tasked with net control and net operations, you know, I went in full net control mode and was ready to ready to preamble and get the whole thing going. But when I listened on the two meter repeaters, um, the local amateurs had it well in hand at that point. They just did a phenomenal job. And their net control operator, I forget his call sign, uh, but there was no reason for us to step in on him. He had full command of the situation and moving traffic. So I'd like to as well give a, a bravo Zulu to those guys that were there on the ground before us. Uh, was that Charlie? Rome? I don't know if that was Charlie Rome. I know uh, he was losing his generator, right? No, Juan was. Um, also, um, you talked about the safe haven. Yeah, that was something we worked out with the uh, lieutenant, the lieutenant Joel Figueroa, at the who was head of the fire chief uh, for the entire island for all the fire stations. He had requested if we could put a ham at his Yunkos fire station, which is where they uh, they headquarter out of every morning for their SARS group, search and rescue, and they had no communications with them. So he said, if we could get a ham there, they would in exchange give a safe haven for any Red Cross workers. So if there were any Red Cross workers, including the amateur radio operators that were out and about, um, couldn't find their way back or broke down or anything, and they needed a safe place, they could go to any fight of the 72 fire stations on the island and they would be given food, water and, and safe haven, not necessarily a cot. But that was huge when we took that to the Red Cross and said they're willing to give this in exchange for one ham radio operator um, to go out to the, this Yunkos fire station. Um, and boy, they, they said absolutely. So the one went there to help with that. Um, there was a lot of stuff going on behind the it scenes was. to make that happen. Um, a lot had to do with me getting involved in this FEMA task force, this communication task force, uh, and getting our guys into the hospitals um, because there was, the hospitals had no communications and they had 51 operating hospitals out of the 69. Um, and I just sat down, I just found a, somebody who could give me a list of all the hospitals with phone numbers. I went out on the uh, balcony so I could get somewhat good uh, coverage and try and just call all 51 hospitals. If they answered the phone, I knew they had communications and I crossed them off the list because we didn't have that many ham radio operators to go around and nobody knew which ones had comms and which ones didn't. So I just got on the phone and started calling 
and um, to figure out which ones didn't have any communications, you know, that I couldn't get through to. So uh, that narrowed our list down on where we could send people. Yeah. And um, so we were able to at one point be in 16 hospitals, I believe, or, or, or no, 14 oh. hospitals. And then we had Andy at the dam and uh, N9 RRM at the uh, fire station. We could have used right, a force of 50. We could have. We, we, we could have put them all out there. And Would you put them. everybody to work if we had 50, Joe? Um, yeah, I like to say that there might not have been 50 of us there, but we were so good it seemed like we were 50. 